train the muscles, not the joints. So today I just did a little bit of chest, just on a machine, just to pump up a little bit. I wasn't looking to do a big chest workout, but just more like something to get warmed up. So I just did a little bit of machine chest just for something different, because I do a lot of dumbbells and a lot of barbell all the time, so it's good to switch it up. Now this is a different machine than I usually use. I you know, every single hammer strength machine out there is different, right? So this is a different type of machine. I think it's hammer strength or maybe it's another brand name, but it's a similar sort of premise, but the angle that you push on is quite a bit different. And I find the, I don't know, I don't even know how to say it, but I guess the torque curve is slightly different than a lot of the ones that I have used. It doesn't mean that this is bad, but I've noticed that I have to sit farther down in the seat to basically make sure the elbows are a little bit more flared. Uh, as opposed to some of the other machines that I've been on with hammer strength. So that said, it's a pretty good feel. The only thing is that I find if I squeeze at the top, I don't necessarily have any tension on the chest at the top. I find most of the tension is at the mid range or uh, at the beginning of the movement. At the end, when I'm locking out like that, I don't necessarily feel much uh, tension in the chest. It's more in the shoulders at that point for some reason, because the handles don't necessarily travel inwards that much. But it is a really neat movement and I like it because it's different, right? So sometimes different is good. It's not necessarily about sticking to the movements that you feel are the best for you. It's sometimes just trying something different because sometimes you get unexpected benefits. See here you can see that I'm noticing that when I lock out I lose tension on the chest so now I'm just doing some short reps at the bottom because I notice that the tension stays on the chest more and I keep that tension on there. So I'll kind of go back and forth. It's almost like a hybrid movement, right? And then I did some rear laterals to get a good pump because it's nice to work on those little body parts. When you know you're gonna work on some big compound like squats or something like that, then you can kind of work on some other auxiliary type exercise or accessories, some people call them accessories, right? Now, some people talk about you know, big shoulders, how to get big shoulders, and they always think about shoulder presses, and I'm a big advocate of shoulder presses. Don't get me wrong, like I love doing shoulder presses. I do find that they do build the overall shoulder and the neck and also sometimes the upper chest if you're sticking that chest out and whatever but really the secret to building really round shoulders is really concentrating on those rear delts or the external rotator cuff muscles i find if you really spend more time on those muscles or at least equal amount of time as you do with presses you're going to get a lot more results for the same amount of effort
mountain. And then I figure, hey, I'm just gonna get right into it and start doing some legs. So here I am doing some legs, doing some squats or whatever. I haven't been up to four plates for a little bit because my knees have been a little tight and whatever. So I did decide to go to four plates for a few sets and then I'll revisit that the next time I come squat or whatever. So yeah, I'm doing my squats here in the gym. Now, of course, uh, if you guys don't know why I squat the way I do or whatever, just watch the video, why I squat the way I do. That, that'll answer your questions right there. Or what is full range of motion? That'll answer some more questions. But just so you know, long story short, there's a difference between powerlifting squatting and bodybuilding squatting and squatting also for your body type. And it doesn't matter how much you disagree with me or, or whatever. Uh, all I'm saying is that each person moves differently and some people will move more efficiently in one way than another. And I find that 90 degrees at the knee is about the extent of the way I can squat with the most efficient amount of muscle activation with the least amount of joint pain. So uh, like I said, also though, my knees are a little bit tight today or whatever. They haven't been tight all the time in my life. Most of the time I've been able to avoid that, but once in a while, if they do get tight, I definitely warm up a lot more. I do like three or four extra sets, maybe a couple sets of three plates before I move on to four plates. And the thing is, is that I haven't squatted heavy this last month or two, just because I've been just, you know, doing some lunges, doing some lighter stuff, maybe focusing on upper body and, and, and things like that. Now I'm just getting back into doing a little bit more heavy weight here. And I'm just getting my groove down with the three plates before I move into the four plates. That's one thing that's really important with your compound lifts is that you get your groove down. And especially if you're in an unfamiliar gym or a different gym, sometimes there's just subtle things that are different. Sometimes the floors are uneven. I mean, that might surprise you, but sometimes you're in a different gym and the floor is just slightly uneven compared to another gym or whatever. Uh, sometimes the mirror placement is different. So sometimes all these things play a role in you finding your groove or making sure that you're actually hitting the right groove when you have heavier weight on your back. Now, one surprise to me was that this, these bars are actually pretty high quality bars. So the knurling is actually incredibly thick. So at three plates, I was fine. I was ripping up my upper back a little bit, quite a bit, and, and at least the bar was sticking there. But once I went to four plates, oh my God, it started ripping me apart. So I had to actually put on a, a t-shirt actually halfway through when I was doing a three plates, I started noticing, I'm like, okay, I better put on a t-shirt because if I just keep my tank top on here, I think I'm gonna have to go to the hospital with, and get stitches or something. So, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, this is what I'm doing for squats. I'm getting a pretty good groove and I'm, I'm more an ass squatter. Some of you guys might be knee squatters, but yeah, I'm sorry, man. I'm an ass squatter. I, I squat with the badonka donk and uh, yeah, I get pretty good activation in the hamstrings and stuff from that and also a good quad sweep. So uh, that's why I squat the way I do. And uh, yeah, enjoy. And then after that, I did a little bit of leg curls on a machine over here because I felt like doing a little bit of leg curls. It's good just to activate the leg bicep and the hamstring and at the same time pump blood into the knee in a different way. So yeah, sometimes you're just doing stuff just for the sake of just getting blood flowing around everywhere and just trusting that everything will become more balanced, right? Balanced and yes and balanced.
I hope you liked the workout. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalglandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters and take care for now. Mountain. Hello.